Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome to another instalment of the What's In The Watch Roll series. That means I'm off on my travels again. It's Christmas, which usually means the same trip for me, to be honest. My wife is from Brisbane, and I think five out of the last eight Christmases that we've been together, we've gone up there to celebrate it with our family. And indeed, that's what we're gonna do again this year, taking John Wood Jr. with us, obviously, for his first ever Christmas. You can only imagine the outfits Mrs. Jomwa has bought for him to wear. Now, Aussie domestic flights are insanely expensive at the moment, which kind of suits me, to be honest, because I enjoy the drive, and I managed to persuade Mrs. Jomwa that it's better if we go on a little road trip on the way up to Brisbane rather than drop a fortune on flights. So we're gonna drive up over the course of three nights, four days, so roughly 250 kilometers or so per day of driving, nothing too taxing, inland via the New England Highway. I've never been up that way, visiting some hopefully lovely country towns like Tamworth, Armadale, and Stanthorpe. Then we'll all spend Christmas in Brisbane and I will drive straight back down myself in time to make more videos for all of you and to work at the Opera House on New Year's Eve. So roughly an eight night trip in all for me, which means I get to pack some watches. As you saw from the video title, I'm gonna take only Seikos with me this time. I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with Seiko. I love some of their models, but I find myself incredibly frustrated by others. I do have a fair few of them in my collection though, and I thought I would show them some love over the festive season. As always, I've scheduled videos to launch on all of the usual days between now and my return, so don't worry, they will still be your thrice weekly dose of Jomwa available should you want it. And if you're going away somewhere for the holidays, safe travels, I hope you have a good one. Let's flip the camera and check out which Seikos I chose. Okay, so it's gonna be a Seiko Christmas. That much has already been established, if not quite a Seiko New Year, because I will be back in Sydney in time to swap watches for Hogmanay. So three in the roll, one on the wrist, and I've got a bit of a confession regarding the one on the wrist. It's my Seiko SSK, the GMT. This is the 005 model. I bought this in July. I sized the bracelet last week. So what then is wrong with the Seiko SSK? Well, nothing really. I guess this one fell victim to the sheer volume of watches that comes in the house. I think the Orient Bambino is another watch that has been sorely unloved this year and deserves more wrist time than it's had. This one came in in July. Do you know what? I was desperate for the orange one, but I could only get the black one. So I bought the black one, sized it up and made the video review saying how important this watch was. And then the next day I got the call saying that there was our orange one available for me, so I promptly sold the black one and picked this up. But have a look at the alignment. The black one was perfect. Check out the chapter ring. That 24 is way off. Similarly, oddly enough, the 12 is way off at the other side, and I was a bit miffed. Come on, Seiko. That's two watches. One was good, one was not so good, so it sat in the box for a bit. I brought it out as a reference point for every other NH34 powered GMT that I reviewed up until this point, but yeah, and I intend to keep it as that reference point, but it just hasn't seen much wrist time, which is a bit of a shame. Because it's nice, I love that orange color. It's a similar orange to the SKX011, which I never had. I've been through all of the other SKX models, but I didn't ever have that orange one. And the Jubilee, I think, makes a big difference as well. I wasn't generally a fan of the 5KX. It offered nothing new, whereas this one offers that new movement and that new bracelet as well. So, sorry, my friend, for leaving you in the cupboard for nigh on six months. I hope to make it up to you. I hope we have a pleasant Christmas together. I suspect you'll be the watch that I'm wearing on Christmas Day. And another watch that I feel I have rather shortchanged over the years is the Seiko Tuna, hence the pickup of this one a few months back. Also, it was an utter bargain. If you watched that video, I thought the watch might have been broken out of the box, which is why I got it so cheap. The second hand was going nuts. It was ticking twice per second, rather than the once every two seconds it should have ticked. Had it been low on juice, but I suspect that was the problem. It's a solar watch, not a new model. I think it had been in the box, waiting for me to scoop it off the shelf, so to speak, for several years, and it has ticked perfectly ever since then. It has missed every single one of those markers since then, though. 
Yeah, okay, Seiko. I kind of forgive Quartz, though, for not hitting the markers. That's not really a massive deal for me. Perhaps it should be. I know it drives people mad when I post videos of these things and the comment section just erupts, but it's never been as big an issue for me as a misaligned chapter ring. Thankfully, this one is much better than the GMT. Now, I did talk about it, but there it is, double-domed sapphire crystal with blue AR and a small chamfer, ready for install. I'm going to do a mod on this tuna. Looking for suggestions, by the way, shrouds, straps, etc. If you've modded your tuna, leave me a comment or direct me to a picture. I would love to get some inspiration before I take on this one. But as it stands, it's not at all a bad watch. Short lug to lug means that big circular hockey puck style case just isn't a problem. The strap though, I'm never really a fan of the Seiko straps with these big kind of stretchy bits. I know it's for wetsuits and to add a bit of extra ventilation there, so the sweat has got somewhere to go, but I don't like them visually and I feel they add unnecessary bulk to the watch overall. But if you've been frightened of the tuna because you have smaller than average wrists, don't be. These things wear really nicely. Talking of which, it's my Seiko Saab 033, one of the sweetest and easiest wearing watches it has ever been my pleasure to own, and as you can see by the scuffs around the high polished bezel, I have worn this one rather a lot. It now resides on an Uncle Seiko Jubilee. It's been on the Uncle Seiko Jubilee since I got this strap. It's not perhaps technically the best strap in the world. It's a bit jingly jangly, but it really suits the watch. Gives it that kind of vintage date just vibe that this thing has always had. The thinking man's date just. I like to call it rather than the poor man's date just. Apart from anything else, prices on these are still really, really strong. They occasionally pop up on Aussie watch forums, etc., Facebook groups that I'm a member of for maybe 7 seven fifty. In fairly poor used condition though, if you're looking for a Minter, you're looking towards 900 Aussie. That's probably three times the retail price, at least two and a half times the retail price back in the day. So I was delighted to admit that I had got this watch wrong. I underestimated it initially, but I was delighted to pick one up shortly after they were discontinued, but shortly before the prices went nuts. A watch that I've really enjoyed wearing over the years, and I'm looking forward to wearing over the holidays. Now, I normally take a Casio in the fourth slot to give me a digital watch with a bit more utility, an alarm, a stopwatch, etc. What am I going to do because I don't own a Seiko Arnia? I don't own one of those Annie Digis. No problem though. I own one of these. It's an SPC255P1 and it has a chronograph and an alarm built in, plus it's got a perpetual calendar, plus that is sapphire crystal, all for less than 250 USD. This one is waiting patiently in the queue for review. It was one of a batch of watches that I got from Joma Shop earlier on in the year, Cabochon Crown. It's a really interesting little piece, this one. Plus, it's vastly complicated, or at least I've no idea how to set any of the features at the moment. So I thought, eight days up in Brisbane, surely there'll be some time to sneak away from the in-laws and have a tinker around with this one, whisper it quietly, I might even take the instruction manual up with me. And it's a sweet watch to wear as well, 40-20 and really slim because it's quartz. The leather strap though, little bit stiff and a little bit squeaky again if I wear this one for a few days in the heat of our Brisbane Christmas maybe. That will give the leather a chance to wear in a little bit to kind of break into my wrist. But yeah, a really interesting look and watch this one. A bit of an oddity, which is why I got it in. Full review coming early in the new year. When I decided to go all Seiko for this video, I was a bit worried about the variety or lack thereof of the Seikos I had in the house. But I needn't have worried. I think there's a fair spread of interesting looks and utility on the table. GMT in a cracking colour, proper dive watch, because I'll be in and out of the pool. The go anywhere, do anything, really. I could have taken one watch and it would have been that one. And something to tinker around with while I'm there as well. So that's my Christmas. What are you going to be wearing on the day and around the holidays? If you're going away somewhere, I say it again, safe travels, have a good one, and I'll see you in the comment section. If you like this video series, you're not short of options for your next one. Click here or here.